given us let us rejoice and be glad in it i am so glad that we have such a wonderful day we have such a good turnout we're getting a lot of people on the uh, internet that come in and see us so we say good morning to them as well whoop i've got another person and i haven't phoned her yet i better <laughs> call her as she attends the church You have told the number oh, to jacked up you. <laughs> <laughs> we all do that. My goodness, she'd be very upset. She's attending church. She's sitting there waiting. Good morning, Miss Dale. Say good morning to Jeannie and everybody. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This is Reverend Dale Haggerty, and she's coming to us all the way down from Raven Bay. Nice. And she's a little sad this morning because she had to send her husband back to where is he? Ah, uh, we're talking about. Yeah, in, in Manitoba. Yeah. She won't get to really visit with him again now until summer. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, so we we are a little sad for that, but we're a little happy that Dale's with us this morning. So thanks, Dale. We'll include you in here. Thank you. And I'm just mentioning that Jeannie is here, and that we are really quite happy to have her. And we're just going to do the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we are able to still get together and let ourselves reach to the highest and the best bring that energy to heal ourselves, to fill ourselves with great joy, so that we may take it to each person that we meet throughout the week. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so we're going to do one more song. We're going to do Kumbaya. <laughs> and uh, then Jeannie's going to talk for us, aren't you? Number 35. 35? Number 35. Number 35. Mm. We're going to sing loud to this one. Oh, no. 
know. I 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 know. here so that I wasn't off in front of her all the time. Oh, just had she needed the light. the light. So anyway, we could have, I could have looked over a lot there. However, I will now introduce Jeannie, and she is going to do her talk. And uh, that's always a thrill, because we know that whatever you've got to say, we've all been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> and that we join in with you. Okay, Jeannie, it's all okay. yours, John. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And it's interesting um, what I'm going to talk about this morning, that we're all women here today. Mm -hmm. uh, just some of you may know that I'm also part of an intentional community at Edenville in Abbotsford. And it's called the Emissaries. The Emissaries have been around together as a, as a group uh, from the early 40s. And if you if we look back in time, I guess you could say that we're not like the original hippies or something, but in those days when the emissaries first came together, it was to live a holistic lifestyle. So the land that we're on has never had any chemicals on it, <clears throat> and as an intentional spiritual community, um, our first objective is to figure out ways to live together in spiritual communion. And it isn't any easier for uh, that community than it is for any others because we're still human beings. Now, today I wanted to talk about uh, the theme, of course, as was mentioned, is love. And in the emissary community, we have uh, a network kind of communication. It's called the Pulse of Spirit. So it's a, a talk that's written by someone, and uh, then it's passed through the membership so everybody can look at it and consider what's been written. So one of these talks was called The Destiny of a Man, and it was written last week by the Spiritual Focus in Colorado, which is one of the emissary communities. 
down in Colorado, it's called Sunrise Ranch, and it's on 320 acres or something like that, with the same, um, uh, the same kind of agreement to keep the land pure and pristine, and to work together in community, helping each other in a spiritual way. So David Crusher, he wrote that piece, and he was talking to men about how men need to open up their hearts. And not just with the women in their lives, but with each other. And those of us that have been on the planet for a while could probably agree that we play a lot of different roles as men and women. Sometimes culturally put together, sometimes socially put together, and at the same time, there are roles that we play that I believe keep us separate from one another. So when I read David's piece, I wrote back in response to his piece, and they decided to put that in the pulse of spirit. So I wanted to share that with you this morning and we'll talk a little bit about that, if that's all right. And this one is called A Woman's Destiny. I wrote it last week. At this juncture of my life, I find myself in an interesting and unique position, straddling, as it were, a bridge of six generations, filled with fond and loving memories of my grandmother, the inspiration nurturing of my mother, and my ongoing role as a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother of young women who look to me for guidance and unconditional love. All of my personal experiences with the closest women in my life are encapsulated in my being, spanning over 60 years of life. Throughout my life and as far back as I can recall, living in a world of material goods, changing trends, technological advances, and uncertain tomorrows, I have been blessed to have seen a modeling of spiritual connection and values from the women in my life. And now from this overview of generations, I find that I am able to see ever more clearly that those values have been the glue that held me together when I could have come apart, and that my personal connection with divine love has never failed me. In my delicate years as a little girl, I watched my grandmother kneel at her bedside, talking to God and praying for those in the family and those in the world who may need God's help and comfort. Even in her later years as she struggled to get up and down from that prayer position, she never failed to talk to God at the end of every day. Although our family did not adhere to strict fundamental religious beliefs. There was grace at every meal, and everyone dressed up for Easter Sunday service at the United Church. Every night my mother would kiss me and remind me to say your prayers. It was a cardinal rule in the family never to use God's name in vain. This gentle and loving honoring of something greater something solid, something that was within me and beyond me, provided a strong foundation from which to view the world in which I lived. I didn't know it as much then as I know it now. To this day, there has never been a doubt in my mind that there was a God somewhere that loved, protected, and guided me. A God I could talk to one-on-one, -on -one. It has been the same God that has been with me all along the way, within my very being, even though there was times that I forgot to make the call and say hello. Now, more than ever, I reach out for that connection in order to bring the best, the truest aspects of my higher self into the world as a woman and as divine love in action. As it is in all of our individual lives, whether male or female, my life as a woman in this incarnation 
has been unique and ever-changing. Navigating childhood, the teenage years, as a young woman, and ripening into adulthood, I have become acutely aware of my feminine essence and the different roles that I have played as I tested that out. My relationship with men and women has been a journey that served to define who I thought I was in this human experience. And there has been more, much more. As the chapters of my life have evolved, the truth of my feminine essence has expanded far beyond what the world of form has attempted to define as me. The programs and patterns of male-female roles that have culturally and socially played out in front of me have been at times confusing, restricting, and downright out of sync with my deeper knowing. It has taken me years to explore the truth of my nature and to honor the beauty and uniqueness of my femininity and to bring that into my world for other women and men to share. Long ago I realized that women have a warrior within them and that men have tenderness and vulnerability that women are freely allowed to bring openly into this world. In many cases, there are qualities of our natures that have been culturally and socially subdued and have served to separate us as men and women. When these inner, inner aspects are subdued, men and women cannot be honest with each other. We can never come to truly know each other as co-creators of our reality. We can never come to share the essence of divine love in a free and open way. And we can never lead together as equals in a world that so desperately needs us. There is a loneliness in the hearts of men and women. That loneliness is the void of separation that is caused by fear of bringing the truth of our natures into the world together. As we turn our hearts towards each other in the ways of true spiritual love, we are free. Men and women bringing the gentle strength that overcomes fear and transforms separation into a power so great that the light of that power shows the ways for generations to come. The world is not destined to be controlled by men or women nor will it survive under the direction of one or the other. It is destined to rise up in the light of both feminine and masculine essences in unity for one purpose only. The divine light can only shine as bright as the strength of that unity. What shall I tell my daughters, my granddaughters, and my great-granddaughters about being a woman? I will tell them that they are powerful beyond measure and that true power is gentle power. I will tell them to love the feminine qualities of their soul's nature and to stand strong in all circumstances as they unite with and honor the men in their worlds. And finally, I will tell them to love God with all their heart, soul, and mind and the men and women in their lives as themselves. <laughs> it's been interesting that a great deal of the response, because the letter goes out across the world, and it has my email on it, that so many of those responses came from men. <laughs> The call to men and the call to women is um, it's not just men speaking to men and women speaking to women. And this always sort of been the way. We see so many different things that we do habitually to proliferate that separation and the roles that we play 
it, it warms my heart to see young men today pushing their baby buggies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those children need them. They need them as much as they need their mothers. And in the work that I do, I know now that the mothering takes place usually between the first eight years of life. And from nine on to 15, they're looking for their dad. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a male figure in their life. And if they don't happen to have a dad around, they will find a male figure so that they can manifest what they think a man is. And if they look up to that man, they will do what that man is doing. So in this um, time that the world really needs us to unite, we talk about peace in the world. And we talk about you know, how one country could get along with another country if we just tried to be peaceful. But when we bring it right back to the grassroots of our life, it's us and the men in our world. Now, that doesn't mean that as human beings that we don't have some challenges with each other, but the women that are sitting in this world, I mean, in this room, you might, you might agree that when another woman's mad at you, whoa, mm -hmm. women can be pretty deadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and there's that, that, that thinking of we're all soft and fluffy and all of that. But there is a warrior in there. And we fight with that warrior in a whole different way. We do know that mostly we're not as physically strong as men are. And thank God. I like being a woman. <laughs> and there is that about our makeup and our body and all of that. Yes, they do have strength. But inside of them, there's a real sweet love. Now, as you go through your life and the relationships that you have with men, it's not just your intimate relationships. It's the relationship with the man boss at work or your brothers at home or your dad or anybody who has played that male role in your life. When I see the responses that I got to this writing from the men, they were relieved. They were relieved to think that they could bring out the gentle, nurturing aspects of who they are, and women wouldn't see them as weak. It's, it's amazing, because we don't know what's going on in their heads, and they want to be manly, and they don't realize that when a, a woman, especially when you get later in your life, and, and, and if you thought about uh, picking someone as a partner in your life, maybe later than when you were a teenager, you're looking for different things. And women, I've told these men, women love it when there's a sweetie pie inside of there. When they, when they see a, a man pick up a baby, uh, and nurture that baby, or just all of the soft things that come out from men in their day-to-day -day life. But in order to have a world that's going to uh, be at peace, I really believe we've got to get at peace with the men in our life and in our relationships as women. Because a lot of the separation that goes on with us as women is caused by men in our life, or something along those lines. So, as I look into the future, and I, and I am hearing the responses, and seeing, if I look at a man, and look for his inner love, look for his tenderness, uh, look for his humor, all the sweet things, I find that I'm looking at a whole different individual. I look to find it now. And as soon as you look to find it, you can see it. Now having said that, with women, <clears throat> there's a warrior in there. And we all know that women have plan A, B, C, D, and E. So that if something doesn't go right, then we're going to go to the next thing, and we're going to go to the next thing, and so on. And so women have a long staying power mm -hmm. in that way. They can also stay mad for years. Oh, yes. <laughs> they have a hard time letting go of stuff when a guy will just say, ah, oh, that's enough. I'm out of here. So 
we have to look, I think, inside of ourselves and see those parts and those roles that we're playing that proliferate this idea of separation between the other aspect of ourself. It's not a feminine thing to be soft and cuddly. It's not a feminine thing. It's a masculine and feminine thing. We're souls first. So God has put us on this planet, this time around, in a female form. Now gender, as we all know, can go from one understanding all the way to the other. It depends on who you are inside of your soul. And we have same gender marriages. We have uh, couples that are raising children. Dad's the mom and mom's the dad. In the, the role, she goes out to work and, and he stays home and nurtures the family. We didn't see that 50 years ago. No way. No way. So, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to bring forward in my life now and encourage the women in my life to understand that we are spirits first. And as those spirits, we encompass the warrior and the nurturer in all of us, including the men. The men just don't know how to bring that forward in a nurturing way. They're not able to sit down with each other and talk about why they shouldn't go to war. Because they've been playing roles for a long time that say, I'm going to stand up stronger to you, and the first one to back down loses. That isn't the way to lead our planet into the future. We just have to look at the papers and know what's going on out there. So where do we start? I think that we start, first of all, with the children in our life and teach those children to respect the men and the women in their life. No men bashing. No women bashing. It's not about that because once you start jumping into the gender idea of things, then you've got separation. Right there, you've got the separation. I have a whole bunch of grandsons, and I have another great grandchild on the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he's a boy. Mm -hmm. So when I think about what I can do, and I, and I know that at this stage of her life, you know, whether you're, you're a younger, younger level or a uh, much older <laughs> level of life, it doesn't matter because the soul is still the same. I remember my mom saying to me when she was in her late, 70s. Nothing's really changed inside. I still feel like I'm me. I still think and feel like I'm me. <laughs> exactly. So the body makes it, does its changes, and who knows, maybe it doesn't have to do that after. You know, in, in a while we'll maybe be able to live eternally in this place, even though some might say, well, no, one trip's enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as women, we have the ability to be leaders in a different way. Men are looking to us for our support of their uh, essence. And when a man's being strong about something, you know, like he's no different than a woman being strong about something. Being standing in your truth. And like I say here, the greatest power is gentle power. Not power over, because if you bash somebody, you got an enemy. And they're going to come back eventually in one way or another, and that war will never be over. I was looking at a thing on the internet the other night of the, plan of the planet, and how the boundaries of all of these countries have changed over the last thousand years, as wars were fought. And you look at it, and in about one minute, it shows you the changing boundaries as this army came down here and took that over. And then this one came over here and pushed them back. And this one came over here and linked with this one and squeezed them out of the way. One war after another after another. Because when you make war, whether you're a man or a woman, you've got an enemy. And they will be back one way or another. So I've really appreciated this connection with men who read this from across the planet. I got responses from Africa and Australia and Britain and different countries and Holland. 
saying thank you for bringing the truth of our essence into the world of women so that we can encourage them by our actions and to, to start to bring forward that nurturing part of them that they've been so scared. Because even the men in their life and their grandfathers and their great father, grandfathers are saying, suck it up, don't cry. You know, stopping all of that in its tracks. But now, if we're spiritual leaders, and I believe everybody in here is, you wouldn't be here. We are an intentional community being right here in this beautiful place. It's intentional that we're here. So we're an intentional spiritual community together. And to help the men in our life by stopping playing the little roles, and we had a little discussion about this the other day, if all fails, get all fluffy and cry or something. <laughs> that isn't the strength that I'm talking about here. And we know as women some of those things that we do to make men do certain things that we want them to do, rather than spirit to spirit talking to them, saying, this is how I feel. How can we work this out together? So whether it's the man next door, or your grandson, or your son, or your father, or your husband, or your boyfriend, or whatever man comes in your path. It's okay to stand strong in the warrior and the tenderness that we have as women. And be in that truth. Stand tall in that. Not aggressively, but in truth. And when we do that, we encourage the men that are in our environment to do the same. I, for many years of my life, for about 20 years of my life, I worked with nothing but men. I was in warehousing, I had a warehouse. So there was truckers and guys, and they're all guys. And I loved it, because I got to know men in a whole different way. And all I had to do was be straightforward, because they taught me very early on, get to that point. <laughs> You know, we have this tendency to go round and around and around and not get to the point. So I really learned that quickly. Because in order to, to work in the world, in the career world with men, that's what you got to do, to be respected. Otherwise, they're trying to figure out ways they're going to tiptoe around you, and that's not honest either. To be honest with who we truly are inside. That spirit is amazing. In this reality, we have just touched the tip of the iceberg of our inner power. Because we got lost in the roles and the dramas that we play. We got absorbed in the movie. Just like children, when you put them in front of a television set and, and they're watching it and you call them for dinner, they don't hear you. Johnny, I've called you three times, dinner's ready and they're just hypnotized into that picture, or that movie, or whatever they're watching. We're hypnotized into this world. We're playing these roles when those roles that we play for the most part are incredibly restricting. It doesn't allow that incredible power. And that's not power over at all. It's the power of truth. It's the inner power that is there. And when you stand in that power, and you know in the moment, whatever it is you're doing, that you're doing the very best of what you can with what you've got and what you know in that moment. Because from this vista, looking back over my life, oh my gosh, I can certainly see that at this point I go, whoa, I don't think I'll do that again. That didn't work. <laughs> or you, could, you get a little bit of hindsight behind you. But you always have to be responsible for the part that you played in the dance. No matter how that dance turned out. You, if you had any effect from that dance, you were in it. So you played a part in it. And what can we do now together with the men in our life with the other women in our life. We're not in competition here. You're born alone, you die alone. 
everything in between there is your own personal <coughs> experience. So I just want to encourage, I really want to encourage, not just my grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but the women in my life and the men in my life, to open their hearts in truth, in truth, and stand in that truth gently, but speak it. Don't hide from it. It's the, the idea that somebody's going to clobber you with something, or a guy's going to beat you up, if that's happening in your life, you need to go inside and find your power. There's seven billion people on this planet, and you do not need to stay in any situation where you're being abused by a woman, or a man, or anybody else. So, this morning, that's really what I wanted to share with you. So that you can go out in your world, touch those people, no matter where they are. It could be the person across the counter at the little corner store. Honor them. Because once we start honoring each other in truth, a whole different energy is going to move in this world. It doesn't take, I've told you some of you this story about being in the tunnel and lighting a match. That tunnel was black and that one little match lit it up. What you bring is everything. What you bring individually, and it's never too late to start. So, <coughs> I hope that somehow this morning, by sharing my experience, and by sharing my love with you, my spirit with you in this intentional community, that somehow I've added a little bit to your light, giving you a little energy in your battery, <laughs> and... Uh, bring the gentleness into this room that we need as we walk out in that world. Strong power. Gentle power. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making Jeannie shift so that I can get back to do the meditation. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Jeannie. That was fabulous. Yes. And, could we get coffee so sure. sure writing? Yeah, sure. You know what? I was just thinking uh, one time we talked about doing an inspirational book that different people in the church wanted to write something good and we could put it in an inspirational book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that would be just really a great writing for the, an inspirational book. Yeah, it would. Yeah, we should all get really? together and do that. Yeah. And uh, so I'd like to tell you that we are a healing ministry and that we do use healing as part of our service and that we uh, ask that you, you listen to the meditation that you bring that energy from the source through yourself and firstly to heal ourselves uh, because we are facilitators of energy we can bring that energy through and as it comes through us it heals all those things and you don't even have to know what's wrong which is what the beautiful part of it is and then as it comes through, you can allow that energy to flow out further and further and further so that it touches the world and the universe that's around us. So I'm going to put the meditation on. We've got it now on the, uh, the internet, or at least on the uh, computer. I'm going to hope that everything works fine. <coughs> and take your thoughts inward and upward to a little spot in the universe where God resides and healing begins. Allow the energy to move through the tips of your toes, moving upward, swirling around and round the body and allow it to come up through the top of the head and flow over the body like a gentle summer rain. As you breathe in again, feel the energy bringing alive all the cells in the body that work together with all of the organs. And allow those organs to be like a wonderful symphony concert orchestra that play their instruments independently 
but they play with such harmony and such rhythm that they are working for the whole beauty of the piece they are playing. And as you breathe the energy in and revitalize all of the energies in the body, in the cells, in the organs, know that you are doing that to bring healing to the whole. And as the energy comes in again through the tips of the toes, allow it to expand into the mind. Let the mind open and be receptive. Let the mind be positive and be healthy so that it may touch the dreams, the ideas that God has to make you all that you can be. Allow those dreams, those thoughts, those energies to come through the mind to healthy growth so that they will grow and produce the dream that God has for you. Breathing in again, allow yourself to come in touch with the spirit, that part of yourself that is always perfect. And allow the spirit to communicate to the mind and the body what it needs for this journey that it is having in this physical existence. And as you have healed your own self, body, mind, and spirit, be like a pebble in a great pond of energy and allow your energy to move forward and ripple outward and let it touch each member in the room. And joining together, allowing the energy to draw through everyone to facilitate the healing. Taking a deep breath now, think about outside of this room, into the community of your family, the community around you, of your teachers and your leaders, and allow that energy to ripple out and touch all of them so that they too may experience the wonderful healing, the wonderful peace Allow that energy now to go forward into the world and not only touch the world's leaders, but to touch the animals, the vegetation, the waters, the atmosphere, so that they may be healed. And let us be thankful to the animals and the vegetation and the minerals that give of themselves and serve us so greatly and feed us so well. Allow us now to reach out into the universe, into other parts of the universe that we are not familiar with, for many mansions in God's world that we are not aware of every room in every mansion. But we send love and we send caring for God promises us that love and healing is never ending. And all we need to do is ask. And the energy will follow the intention of the thought. And the healing will begin. Now 
as we circle back to the seat of the soul, take a few moments just to sit quietly before you come back to your everyday workaday world to enjoy the tranquility and the peace of the healing area of your garden, the inner garden of healing. And know that you may visit here at any time. And God has promised the love and the healing is never ending. So open your hearts, your mind, and your hand. God bless you, and he sends his angels to keep after you. from both sides for the healing that we received. We'd also like to uh, pass the healing especially on to uh, Sheila Mary. Uh, she did have an injury. How is she doing now, Jim? Uh, she had um, a heart attack the day she went into the hospital and she's had three episodes of that heart attack since. Wow. So because of her age, she's going to have to go to rehabilitation for a few months. Okay. But she's not ready to leave hospital yet. No, she'll be a while. But she's perky and she's... And we'd like to thank the baby for the healing that we've had for Robin, too. Robin, yes, was thank you. you were very ill. And uh, the, all the way back, she came up the stairs this morning and I said, Wow, you're doing good. <laughs> well, better anyway. Yeah. Going down is hard. Going down is hard for yeah. her. Going down for me. <laughs> going down for me is easier. Going up is harder. So we should get together. I'm gonna get that together. I'll hold you going down, and I'll you hold me coming up. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would work really well. So we'd like to thank you for that, and thank, uh, thank all the uh, people here that uh, have loved ones, and you just have to think about them. And the healing goes forward. We also have a bowl here, and we do pray on that every day. So if you want to put your uh, loving and best wishes to someone, just use their first name. That's all you need. And the intent, the minute that you think about it, God knows the intent is to start sending healing. And, uh, of course, the healing is always there. The angels are always working. So we're happy with that. And Jeannie, I just thought, really have to say that I enjoyed that talk. It, it, it mm -hmm. could relate so much, I imagine everybody else here too, mm -hmm. could relate so much to that. And I just got thinking you're talking about how far back you and I go, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of the younger people didn't come through that and I go back even further than you. And when I first got married, um, before we got married, Ozzy said to me, you have to quit your job because women don't work because it makes their men look as if they can't keep them. That was the, the thought that men were brought up on. If your wife worked, you weren't man enough to keep your wife. And even uh, other women uh, would say, I don't know why she's working, she's taking jobs that young single women could have. Mm -hmm. So I felt such a change that that we have seen, mm -hmm. which I'm kind of a Karen share here, but such a change that I've seen. But I can remember that when I had this baby small, Ozzy would change diapers, and he would bathe the babies, which was, you know, pretty unusual uh, oh, nice. for a man. And in those times, and in the 50s, I'd hang my clothes out on the line because we didn't have dryers, and he'd come home from work and see it starting to sprinkle and he'd pull the clothes in off the line and bring them in because I was making dinner or whatever. Whereas other men would say, hey, you better get those clothes in, you know. Yeah. So there has been a tremendous change. And that, 
partly has to do with the fact that we've allowed the men to have that nurturing situation, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. So we need to let them, uh, from babyhood, uh, play with whatever, play with the trucks, girls can play with the trucks, the boys can pick up the doll, you know, we start really young with, oh, don't give them a doll, it might, yeah. might warp this thinking or whatever, you know, dad should say, don't love my boy a doll. <laughs> I saw a thing on Facebook that said, give a boy a doll, and oh my goodness, maybe he'll learn how to be a father. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and the difference is that when my granddaughter, when yeah. we both have great kids, great grandchildren, my grandson, great grandson, was uh, going to have a little brother, so they bought a doll for him so that he had a baby and his mother had a baby and it really worked. When she was changing her baby, he changed his baby. Mm -hmm. and, and it really did work and they just get along a house of fire and those, mm -hmm. those boys are far from feminine. Yeah. They wrestle and they run and play lacrosse and do all that stuff so I don't think it hurt them any. No. You know, so I think we are changing in that aspect and uh, you know, the old idea that, that you weren't were supposed to be uh, kind of subservient or whatever the case may be. And those are real hard roles to break through because not so long ago, women couldn't even get an education. No. You couldn't be a lot of jobs that you no. wanted. There's no way that you could yeah. get in. I was going to be a detective, I thought. Yeah. When I got out of school, there was no females in the no. police oh, department well, at all. As I was a, shocked. As a matter of fact, I've just finished writing my book. That, yeah. The novel. Now I've got three books. They're all going, and one's already in print, in there, in Amazon, and the other two will be in in the next couple of weeks. But in the novel that I wrote, I've written a female sergeant in the in the <laughs> RCMP. Ah. You can know that that's not the fifties. No, no. Right. There were no females in the 50s. It wasn't the 60s, probably, or the 70s. Yeah. So you pretty well know the, the date when this book is supposed to be taking place or when this is supposed to be taking place by the, what's going on, like in that police department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's kind of one of the things I was going to say on the Karen Shara's. Three books will be on. Uh, the first book I've got. Uh, actually, the second book I wrote is the one that's on first because we've lost the manuscript off the computer for the first book. So Kim's typing it all back in so that it can can go in to be published. And then I'm just doing the last editing on the fictitious novel. So and uh, so we're going we're going to have some fun with that. Uh, and. You know, as I said, Jeannie, maybe that's another whole thing, you know, we can look yeah. at some kind of women's inspirational book or something that we can yeah. do, I don't know. And it's not hard to put stuff like that together and uh, get it published these days. I'm okay. going to have a workshop called Spirit of Woman. Oh, mm. wonderful. Want that to get out of Edenville. Yeah, really? So, so I'll let you know. Oh, how good is that? For yeah. sure. Um, some of the things that we're, we're thinking too now that we've got the larger screen, I want to Skype some people in from other parts of the world. Um, I just met another lady in uh, Southampton who is a medium. She and her husband have a center there and uh, she bought a deck of my cards and through conversation back and forth uh, we've talked and if I do a class say from 11 to 1, that's 7 to 9 their time, so I could do a workshop for them, they could do a workshop for me because, yeah. So, anyway, Dale, are you still there? Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay, we just want to double check that you're still there. We're going to now uh, go and uh, there's nothing really going on that we have as far as any functions that are going on. Jeannie, do you have something other than the, you know, when that spirit one? Uh, no, well, we are, somewhat along the lines of what you were saying, we're going to be having like a once a month dinner where the table is set and the screen is at the other end. We have dinner from six till seven 
and then someone in the world comes on at seven to eight and has tea with us. Oh, how good will that be? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, you know, we can use the media now. And this is what we're doing mainly with the chapel now is we're online. So the online people are going to get advantage of what you guys are getting here today, which is really great. I've invited Neil Donald Walsh to come for dinner. Oh, how well, nice. he wrote his book at Sunrise Ranch. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. That very first Conversations with God. Uh -huh. yeah. Maybe that's oh, what guy in there. Uh, I'll let you know if he's going to be. Yeah. If he's going to be on Skype. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going now into the, the mediumistic side of the demonstrations, and we find that. Uh, did you want to go into the into a circle and do it that way? Sure, so that? maybe other people have messages as well. Yeah, exactly, and that's what lovely. it works lovely if we do okay? the circle. So if everybody wants to bring the chairs in. Somebody can use this one. And we ask Dale to come in and help us too, and we won't forget that Dale's there. And uh, get, make sure we get a message for Dale as well. And what's good about this is that we're not under any. So before we start, do you, did you want to say anything to maybe some of the people that aren't as familiar? Aren't as familiar with the relationship? Sure. Okay. Um, we are all linked to everything. We are all connected to the ends of the universe. We are all connected to the Divine Spirit. We are all connected to the people and our loved ones that have passed. We are connected to our angels and our guides. There is no separation between us. And when we let our chattering mind just become quiet and step aside, we go into that vibration where that connection can be made in a very strong and, and clear way. So just know that we all have it. But when we get all of that thinking going on, it, the chatter is too great to go down into the, the levels that you need to go into. So in a circle like this, we share that energy, and it brings everybody into the same sort of vibration. It's like tuning in a radio station so that you can hear clearly what's coming in from other dimensions that there's it's beyond it's eternal it's beyond anything you could imagine so you can be in tune you can be right connected with loved ones that have passed angels guides masters many different uh, connections you can be in touch with this with the animal kingdom you can be in touch with a tree and that may sound like what but where there's life there's consciousness and we are connected to every piece of consciousness that there is and far beyond what we can even imagine. So what we endeavor to do in spiritualist tradition is to quiet the mind, go into that vibration, and see if there's something that we might bring to each other through a message for each other or even to listen to the message that's coming for ourselves through our masters and our guides and through God, ultimately. Yeah, ultimately that's where it all that's comes where it's from. Coming from. They're all connected to the God, to the God source or, or the higher source. Mm -hmm. So did you want to start out and then I'll I join in? I'd to come to you if I could. Sure. 